Welcome back to another construct video and in this video we're looking at the concept of a Y sort. This is where we can move in front of and behind objects seamlessly without too much code or hassle. So let's get started. So to start off with we've got our player which has just got the 8 direction behaviour. I've got some trees that we're going to apply this to as well as a rock. So I'm going to just create a new object for the rock. Scroll down to sprites and just give it a name. Now in terms of what it's going to look like, I've just got my pre-made rock already. So I'm just going to place that in. Now for the hitbox, for now I'm just going to set it to the bounding box. Now with our hitboxes, we want to allow the player to go behind the object. Now if we've got this as our hitbox, they're not going to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is lower the hitbox right down. And this means that they still hit it, it's still a solid object, but they're able to move behind it. Final thing we need to do is take our origin point and move it to the very bottom. Now there is a way around this if you don't want to do this to all objects, which we'll do for our player. But for now we're going to set it to the bottom. And I'm just going to place this in my world. And I want to place a couple of these because again, this is a Y sort. It is going to sort stuff by the Y axis, so we need lots of rocks in lots of different positions. Next, we can move on to our code. So I'm going to go to my event sheet, I'm going to add an event, and it's going to be a system event. Now we're looking for a for loop. So we want this one here for each ordered. Now we're going to order by our rock, and we want the expression to be rock.y. And this needs to be ascending. So it's going to start with the rock with the lowest y coordinate, and then it's going to move all the way up one at a time. Now for every time we go through these rocks one at a time, we're just going to take its layer and we're just going to move it to the top. This means that the one with the highest Y sort will be on the top layer and the one with the lowest Y sort will be on the bottom layer. We then need to fit our player into this and fit where our player goes. So we're going to add a blank sub event and we're just going to do a comparison. So we're going to check the player's Y position. So we're going to compare Y and we're going to see if it is greater then rock.y. And if it is, we're going to move the player to the top. This means the player will move to the layer just one above all the objects. And as the player moves around, this will recalculate itself. Now we've got one problem with our player. If we edit its animations, you'll see that the orange point is in the center. Now I can change this, but this changes a lot of stuff. And if we've got animations on the go, we'd have to change all of that. And this is a bit of a nightmare for our player. So there is a solution to this. So what we're going to do is we want to take away half of the player's height away from this calculation. So easiest way to do this is we're going to do rock y minus, and then inside of the brackets, player dot height divided by two. And this will allow us to do that calculation. And now if we test it, we can now go behind our rocks. And then when we move forward, we're now in front of them. So there's a couple more things we can do. First thing we need to do is add the solid behavior. So I'm gonna to go to my rock, edit behaviors, and add the solid behavior. This now means that I can't pass through them, which means I've touched the top of the rock and I'll stop, like so. But it doesn't look like our player is in front of it, it looks like our player is getting stuck by it. The effect works the other way around, but not on the front. So we're actually going to take our player's hitbox now, edit, and we're going to shrink the player's hitbox down just so it covers our feet. Now, if you're a bit worried on a game and you're going, well, this is going to affect a player being able to hit or an enemy being able to hit my player because the hitbox is smaller, what we can do is we can actually set up some solid collisions and we can have a different object pinned to our player. So you can have a separate one pinned to the player and with your solid objects, you've got tags that you can use. So we can set a tag for the Y sort that only affects the player. So there are some ways around this that you can play around with. With this in place now, our player will be able to go right up to our rock and all the way behind it without any issues. And let's finally add our tree to this because our tree is a different object we want to add. Now we've got our tree as well. Now our tree is a little bit more tricky because getting this sort of one object is really quick and easy. Getting this sort of multiple objects causes a lot of issues. So there's two main approaches. One is a free solution, which is good, not amazing, but good. And one is a paid for solution, which works amazing. 
So let's start with the free solution first. What we do instead is we take one object, such as our tree, and we add different animations for the different types. You see that I've got my tree and my rock all set up. And then if I add in an additional tree, I can just change the animation that this starts with to be a rock. And if I now change this to instead of saying tree, if I just rename this to say um, Y sorts or Y objects, I can then just come in here and replace all mention of rock. And we'll do Y sort instead. This means that everything that I've got in that is classed as a Y sort will follow the same rules. This does limit you slightly because it means that we have to use one object to represent multiple objects, but is a really, really quick and easy solution to this. And as you can see from testing it, this works absolutely fine. I can go in front and behind the rocks as normal, and I can go in front and behind the trees as normal. And I said there's also a paid solution as well. So if we just revert this back before we did that change, so we've got just our trees and rocks created before. We can actually create something called a family. Families are extremely powerful inside of constructs. Sadly, they're locked behind the paid wall. But if we add a new family, we can add our tree to it and we can add our rock to it. And we can rename this family our Y sort. And we can go to our event sheet and replace all mentions of rock with our Y sort. And this just means anything we add to this new family will follow the Y sort behavior. So we can go behind and we can go in front. And this is much, much easier as a developer because you can just quickly add something to a family if you want the players to be able to go in front and behind it. But anyway, that's all we've got time for for today. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and comment your ideas below. I'll see you in the next video.